I was going to get all cute and dressed and do my makeup and everything to film this episode, but honestly, I want to have a chill Friday. So we're just going to chill today. I'm still in my pajamas. I still have like my pimple patch on. Honestly, we're just going to chill. Grab a snack because we're going to talk about our relationship with our bodies and our relationship with food. So grab a snack, sit down with me, and let's catch up. Let's talk. How are you guys? I hope everyone is having a really good time. I went out last night. And I'm kind of tired because I came back home super late. I was really hungry. So then I made pasta at like 4 a.m. And then I watched Ocean's 8 while eating my pasta. And I had a really good time. But I'm very tired. And it's like 2 p.m. And I'm still in my pajamas. So since it's Sunday, it's not Sunday for me. But it's Sunday for you guys. Since it's Sunday, you're also probably chilling at home in your pajamas. So grab your favorite snack. And let's talk about it. Good morning. Can you talk? I really need coffee. I'm so stressed. I was up studying. I'm gonna be late to class. I'll call you later. I just wanna be lazy right now. I should now. probably go to the gym. I'm hungry. Wanna hang out? I don't know anyone going tonight. I'm kinda freaking out. Does this look good? It's gonna be so much fun though. I can't wait. And yeah, that's what I would do. Just don't quote me on that. For me guys, my relationship with food really started changing when I started looking at food from a different perspective and I started viewing food as a different thing because I was looking at food as this like thing that was going to help me get the ideal body that I wanted. That's what I thought the purpose of food was initially. And when I was struggling with my relationship with food and when I was going through my eating disorders, I, that's how I looked at food. I thought food equals how I get my dream body. Food became like a resource to get that body that I really wanted. But it didn't start changing and I didn't start having a good relationship with food until I started viewing food for what it is. And guys, food is not a resource to get your dream body or to get this ideal body that society set as a standard. That is not the purpose of food. The purpose of food is for you to be healthy. The purpose of food is to nourish you. You need protein because you need energy, you need carbs, you need sugar, you need vegetables. Like you need a little bit of everything and not to look a certain way, but to feel good, to be healthy so that you can get up every single day and do what you're doing. Because when I wasn't eating and when I was honestly, yeah, not eating a lot, I was feeling very weak and very tired all the time and lightheaded and just, you know, like weak because I didn't have the energy. I didn't have fuel inside me. I didn't have food inside me. So your relationship with food is not going to change unless you change the way you look at food. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So to fix your relationship with food, first start looking at food for what it is. It is not this resource to get your ideal body. It's for your health. And fixing your relationship with food is something only you can decide to do. I woke up one day and I said, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change my relationship with food. I'm gonna overcome this. I'm gonna fix this. You have to be willing to want to do it. And the first step after you decide, okay, I really wanna get better, after you decide that, you have to change the way you look at food. So once you change the way you look at food and once you're like, okay, this is something that's going to fuel my body. It's something that is healthy for me, for my health, so that I can live a long and healthy life, not so I can look a certain way because my look is going to change through the years with childbirth because we're females, through things like our bodies are going to change, but I need to live a long and healthy life. Otherwise, I can't experience all of the amazing things that life has to offer. So that's the first thing. You're like, okay, I need to start eating. And I think it's a mistake to try to eat a lot at first because right now your relationship with food is iffy. Right now you can barely eat. So if you put a massive plate of food in front of your face, you're like, there's no chance I'm going to eat that. You know, like there's there's no way I'm going to eat that. You're going to get very overwhelmed if you try to eat just a lot right away. Start small. Eat small portions maybe like they can be like very small but you can have like four or five of them a day but if you start with like small portions and just eating multiple multiple times a day if you're looking at something smaller it'll feel easier and it'll feel like it's like it's just like a couple of bites and you'll get it over with so that's something that I started to do instead of like 
three big full meals at the beginning. Like we'll get there, you know, it's baby steps at the beginning. Instead of just like three big massive meals, cause there was no way I was going to do that. I was like, okay, maybe something really small, but they were easier to get through and try not to eat alone too. Eating alone is really hard and it's very easy for you to not eat if you're eating alone. So try to call someone if you live by yourself, like I live by myself. So something that I did was like, I would call someone, my sister, my mom, my friend, if they weren't in class, like try to call someone to put them there and like, you can talk to them and you don't have to tell them like, watch me eat and like, make sure that I eat. But you yourself know that like, if they're in front of you, like, you're like, you have to finish it in a way. I don't know. Like that helped me a lot. Just calling someone to make sure that I got through those meals. If you can obviously eat with someone, try to eat with someone, try to distract yourself when you're eating, try to really focus on what you're talking about with that person, how they look like the place around you, the environment, the music or play some music. Like try to think about all the other things that are going on while you're eating so that you're not so focused on like the fact that you're actually eating. And this is all at the beginning because it's a slow process. It's hard. Don't try to rush it and like overwhelm yourself because it can easily just like backfire and then you go back to your old unhealthy habits and like your old mindsets. So start small, talk to someone, and then you'll progressively start increasing the amount of food that you eat in one plate. And then you'll start eating three full meals and whole big meals a day. There's also something I think is extremely important when it comes to recovery that a lot of people like don't talk about sometimes, which is gaining weight because you will probably end up gaining weight once you start eating more or not, you know, doing the old unhealthy things that you do. Once I stopped doing all my unhealthy habits and once I started eating, a lot more and bigger meals, I gained weight, guys. Like, I gained my weight again. Like, everything that I had lost during the time where I struggled with food and had an eating disorder, all of the weight that I had lost, I've gained it back. Like, I'm back at square one, basically, like, where I started. And I honestly think of that as, like, something that I'm very proud of. Whenever I was gaining weight... I always looked at it as a sign of recovery, a sign of success, a sign of I'm doing well. I never looked at it as a holy crap, like I'm gaining weight, like this is not working. Like I we want to get there. You want to gain weight in a way because that to me, like personally, that to me is a sign of health. It's a sign of recovery. It's a sign that you are doing well and that you're progressing. And honestly, guys, when you're going through recovery, that is probably the hardest part is being strong enough to watch yourself gain weight, to watch yourself lose that quote unquote, like ideal body that you thought you had or that you were getting. And it's really hard. And it happened to me so many times where I started eating a lot again and I started gaining weight again. And it happened a couple of times where I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, oh my God, I gained weight. And and in a negative way, you know, like I thought like, I, (laughs) like I gained weight, like I'm going back to like, like I'm going to be ugly again and I'm going to be fat again. And I'm like, I'm like, I was scared, but it took a lot to be like, it took a lot of strength to look at myself. And even though I thought and I was gaining weight to think but this is a good thing this is a good thing because that means I'm eating which I wasn't before this is good this is progress this is recovery once I started gaining that weight again I did start eating healthier in general just because like I said I think the biggest thing that helped me with my relationship with food and still does to this day is shifting every single perspective and every single opinion that you have about food and about your body. You have to look at it in a completely different way, like a 180 in your head. And the biggest 180 was looking at food as something for my health, not something for looks. 
So once I did start gaining weight, I was also eating healthier. Like nowadays, I eat healthy. I still indulge in snacks and I eat desserts because I have a very sweet tooth. I love desserts and candy and snacks. So I will eat them whenever I'm craving them. But I don't eat like super unhealthy things every single day just because now I am concerned about my health in general. In general, I do want to take care of my health. I want to take care of my body as it is because I love my body, not because I want it to look good, just because I want to take care of it. And taking care of it means giving it healthy, nutritious food, but it also means giving it delicious food because I have one life and I want to enjoy it. I want to be able to eat that chocolate dessert that I'm never going to eat again and have a really good time at that restaurant with people and eat those french fries. But those things happen sporadically. But I'll indulge every once in a while. It's it's all a part of it. But no matter what I tell you, all of these tips and tricks and everything really comes down to shifting the mindset. You can't think of gaining weight as a sign of weakness and backtracking. You have to think of it as a sign of strength and recovery. And you have to be patient with yourself because it's not going to happen overnight. It's not something that it's super easily done. Like I said, it takes, like it still happens. I still sometimes gain weight and still think, I, my God, I gained weight. Like, what am I going to do? Like summer's coming up. I'm good now. Like I'm on the other side of it. I don't have an eating disorder anymore. But we're always going to have to face moments of insecurity, moments where we think, maybe I shouldn't eat that dessert. Maybe I should eat a little bit less today. Oh my God, maybe I'm gaining weight. Those moments will forever happen. Those moments are going to keep happening. It's just a matter of in that moment, reminding yourself of all the progress you've made, everything that you've done, that you've overcome, how far you've come, how good of a relationship that you have with food now. You can't let all of that go to waste. You have to be strong enough to keep fighting it. You have to remind yourself of that shift in perspective. You have to hug yourself and love your body because food is not for you to look a certain way. So if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're gaining weight and your body's changing and it's looking a different way, That's not a bad thing because of the food. That's a good thing because of the food. I also think it is important to talk to someone about it. I know it sucks because whenever people told me like, hey, maybe you should eat a little bit more. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Like admitting it was horrible. Like I I could not admit it at all to my parents, to anyone like my friends would have to tell my parents and like my mom like hey she's not really eating like what do we do my friends would talk about it between them and like try to figure out like how to help me but I would never admit it to you like they tried talking to me and I was like nope I'm fine (laughs) like I'm fine so honestly it kind of starts there (laughs) with first admitting it but but I had to wait for people to like really pull it out of me And people really like slap me across the face and be like, hey, you're not eating. Like, wake up. Like, you have an, like, we need to, you have an issue with food. Like, we need to, you need help, basically. I waited for it to get there. I would advise to talk to someone because you know, deep down, you know, you know that you're doing those things that you shouldn't be doing, or you know that you're skipping meals, you know that. Maybe you're wor- like working out extreme amounts. You know you're doing these things that you shouldn't be doing when it comes to food. So you know about your unhealthy relationship with food. You know about it. Don't deny it. On the contrary, if I were you, if I had to go through it again, I would go up to someone. Someone that you're close with, your mom, siblings, a friend, someone that you can talk to and just tell them like, hey, listen, like, I think I have an issue because I've been struggling a lot with my like relationship with food recently. You don't have to tell them everything that you've been doing exactly. You don't have to like disclose the details and everything, but just like make them aware and make them aware so they can keep an eye on you. They're going to help you through it. They want what's best for you, but they can't help you get there and they can't like keep an eye on you 
just to make sure that nothing bad happens to you because it can get bad. And so they can help you too, obviously. But it is important to like tell someone if you can. Just make them aware so you're not alone in this. It sucks even more having to be alone through your relationship with food and like through struggling with it. So recovery is already hard enough. You don't want to go through it alone. Trust me, nothing ever in life you want to go through alone. Like breakups, relationship with food, confidence, self-esteem, depression, anxiety. Trust me, anything that you struggle with, it's better to go through it with someone. So try to find that one person that you can tell just so they can, like I said, keep tabs on you. Okay, how's your snack? What was your snack? Comment down below what you snacked, what you had while watching this episode. But I hope you enjoyed your snack because you deserve that snack. We all deserve to splurge, but we also all deserve a good, healthy, long-lasting body. And, and only we can give our bodies that fuel that it needs so we can dance around and we can be our best selves. Trust me, like you think better, you feel better, your mood honestly is better when you eat. And it took me a couple of years, but those are some of the tips and tricks that helped me like specifically with my relationship with food. Like there was other things that I also had to realize for my self-confidence, just body image in general, like ideal body type. Though that's like a separate thing, but like when it came to like food specifically and like eating, those are some of the tips and tricks that really helped me. Those are the things that I did through my journey and through the process and things that I still do to this day whenever I do gain a little bit of weight because it happens. Um, but there's nothing, I don't think there's nothing to be ashamed about. I do gain weight sometimes, especially around the holidays because I'm eating a lot because there's a lot of good food during holiday season. And honestly, food is just very yummy. Like, you know food is yummy and you're depriving yourself from all of that yummy food just so you can look a certain way. It's not worth it. So guys, you all have a new priority. Your new priority is not to focus on foods that will make you look a certain way and to avoid foods that will make you look a certain way. Your new priority is to make sure you're eating a couple of meals a day. That is your new priority. That is the new thing that you're going to be focused on. You're not focused on, I want to look a certain way and I'm going to avoid eating foods. We're going to shift, shift the priority. The new priority is I need to eat three meals a day. That is my new goal. Make it a goal. And I know you can accomplish it. You're strong enough to get there. You're strong enough to accomplish anything. Set your mind to it and you can do it. If I could do it, you can do it. Trust me. Speaking of, what time is it? Because I'm getting hungry. It's time for lunch, actually. I'm going to make lunch. <laughs> speaking of, I was getting hungry. I was like, oh, we're speaking. I'm talking so much about food that I'm getting hungry now. So I'm going to make something to eat. Also, backtrack. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog for this week, but I'm going to go make food because I am hungry. And then I have to go to the gym because I've been working out recently. It's honestly really good for your health. One, trust me, I've been on this like health grind. And then second, it also just really makes me happy. Like it like makes you like energized, happy, like the serotonin or endorphins, whatever it is. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've just been really enjoying the gym. I'm going to go to the gym and have a party tomorrow. I still have to do homework, whatever. <laughs> but we're going to go to a party tomorrow. So Stay tuned.